Uh, we've talked in the last video about the death of God uh, revealing the truth of reality, which is the will to power, right? Um, uh, and Nietzsche thinks that the death of God is sort of where society is heading. We're, we're slowly coming to realize that God is no longer credible, that God is no longer believable. Think of the death of God like uh, when you first found out there was no Santa Claus when you were a little kid. I hope you hope I'm not revealing anything to any of you guys. Uh, but it, it's a bit, a bit of a shock. And Nietzsche thinks we're, we're, we're not slowly able to just embrace atheism altogether. We, it happens in stages. So what ends up happening is most people can question the existence of God, but they can't question the existence of the morality that came with the Judeo-Christian God in Western culture. What does he mean by that? And this will bring us into this idea of will to power and perspectivism. Uh, he means that if you look at the Judeo-Christian ethic, the metaphysic of, uh, of God, it's tied to an idea, a very important ethic that is unique to the Jews and to Christians. Nietzsche talks about this in the genealogy of morals. This idea, this unique ethic, uh, let's call it uh, the mercy ethic or the ethic of concern for victims. Nietzsche thinks this ethic is unique to Judeo-Christianity. It's unique to the West. You don't find it in any other culture. You find it a little bit later in Buddhism, really after the second or third centuries with, in, uh, with the idea of the Bodhisattva. But this idea that we care about weak people, that we care about the oppressed, the persecuted, uh, the poor, the orphan, the widow. This is a unique Judeo-Christian value. And what Nietzsche notices is that when God dies, the metaphysical foundation is, of course, stripped. And the ethic attached to it, though, doesn't just go away. It takes on various uh, permutations and mutations. It takes on various forms. So people who deny the existence of God, atheists, still strangely believe in the Judeo-Christian ethic. They deny the Judeo-Christian God, but they keep the Judeo-Christian ethic. So a very famous atheist uh, like Richard Dawkins uh, uh, evolutionary biologist at Oxford says, well, why do you believe, why, you know, you Christians, why do you believe in, in Jesus? Why not Thor? Why that God, right? And I would turn it right back to Dawkins and say, well, Dawkins, I'm sure your ethic is one of mercy and concern for victims and the oppressed. Why do, why that ethic and not the Greek ethic, which has to do with manliness and power, okay? Um, uh, or, or whatever other ethic. Why not, why not the Iliad? Uh, why the Bible? Why is that your foundation for ethics? And Nietzsche would say, because uh, this ethic is so powerful, and behind Western culture, we're so saturated in this ethic. Okay, so let me rewind for a second. What does this mean, and how does this connect to the will to power? Okay, well, Nietzsche says, if imagine, let's take him seriously for a second. God is dead, and there's nothing but power structures. It's nothing but the will to power, the will to life. That means reality bifurcates into two perspectives, strangely, strength and weakness. Nietzsche is a perspectivist. If power is the ultimate explanation for all, all human behavior, all cultural behavior, all behavior in general, then there are people with power and people without power. There are strong and there are weak people. There are winners and there are losers, okay? There are the strong and the weak. And Nietzsche thinks these two perspectives are really the, the foundation of the perspectivism he's embracing as a philosopher of the will to power. Everything is relative to perspective, but not just relative to any perspective, a perspective of power. Now, Nietzsche will say this. You have this perspective of strength, this perspective of weakness. From a purely Darwinian sense, right? Why do we think that if there are, there are strong, weak people and strong people, why side with the weak? Why side with the weak? Why not side with the strong? Why don't we have an ethics of strength? Why not let the weak die off, as Hitler argued or Nazis argued, right? Why side with the weak and the oppressed? Nietzsche would say, there is no good reason to do that other than 2,000 years of catechesis in Christianity, 2,000 years of habituation and catechesis in Judeo-Christian ethics, okay? So this idea that we just assume that if someone is victimized, it's wrong. Nietzsche would say, that's not an assumption that's gone all the way back through uh, culture. Darwin noticed this, uh, noted this himself in um, uh, The Descent of Man, that there is no good reason by his own Darwinian explanation for the world why we should side with weakness and not strength. Matter of fact, if you look at the animal kingdom, the animal kingdom sort of shuns weakness, right? Um, Birds who are sick, they'll be thrown over the nest. Um, animals who are sick are left behind. Uh, life doesn't care about weakness. Nietzsche thinks actually the Judeo-Christian Judeo ethic is, is rather base and disgusting. I don't think this, by the way, I'm, we're talking about what Nietzsche is saying. But he gives us a good thing to think about here. If God is dead and there is no God, and we're slowly starting to realize this, and power is really the ultimate explanation for existence, and power bifurcates into really two perspectives, perspectives on power, the strong and the weak. Why side with the weak? He asks us to think about that, right? And this is really, by the way, his critique of Christianity and Judeo-Christianity is that it's, it sides with all that is weak and base and anti-life. This is Nietzsche's a philosopher. He's a pro-life philosopher. And he thinks, and he puts it this way. My philosophy is Dionysus versus the crucified. Dionysus versus the crucified. That is, Dionysus is the Greek god of wine and intoxication and life and celebration. And he thinks, my philosophy is Dionysus versus the crucified. The crucified, you know, it's a picture of someone hanging on a cross being tortured to death. What weakness and baseness and anti-life. And Nietzsche's philosophy is really trying to argue for a way to get out of 
or a way to understand ourselves or reorient ourselves in a world that where Judeo-Christianity is dying because he's worried that a lot of uh, malevolence and violence and murder will happen uh, in the name of this ethic that is no longer attached to the metaphysics, okay? So understand this. The death of God leads to the idea of the will to power. It shows us that behind all of our actions are, are this, is this instinct, this unconscious instinct for power or life, right? And, and life is best explained by perspectives on power. And all morality and all religion and all philosophy is, be, is best explained from the perspective of power. Okay, from the perspective of power. And he asks us to ask, which perspective of power are we thinking out of? Because thoughts, morality, religion come out of a perspective of power. When you're thinking and conceiving of the world, are you, are you conceiving from a perspective of strength or one of weakness? Okay, and moreover, why should we side? This is just something to think about. Why side with weakness? Especially if Darwin's right. 